So, India aims to achieve 500 gigawatts of non-fossil fuel-based clean energy capacity by the year 2030. Ambitious or achievable? Or what needs to change or improve to get there? Yeah, quick answer. It's a very ambitious, lofty goal. Mm. So to put, get, to put that into context, India has to add about 50 gigawatts of renewable capacity every year by 2030 to hit that target. In 2024, it's a record um, additions year and we've only seen under half of that 25 gigawatts. So very ambitious. Um, it's riddled by a bunch of challenges. Um, grid capacity constraints is a big one, so challenges the infrastructure, um, as well with as well as um, delays in signing agreements, actually getting these um, you know projects to into execution. So that's a massive hurdle that will um, we believe um, make India fall short of this goal. India is concurrently planning to add 80 gigawatts of new coal plants by 2032. So that's hedging to a large extent because of uh, the importance of reliable supply and this issue of intermittency too. Does that tell you that policymakers themselves recognise that the current frameworks need to be changed and may not adequately support 500 gigawatt renewable approach? Yeah, exactly. So India's coal capacity will continue to increase, mm. albeit at a slower rate. And sort of India's approach is to ensure that it has over capacity that includes coal mm. um, and in addition to renewables. Um, just because of you know all of, all of the issues that the intermittency of renewables bring, so before it can you know um, very uh, with assurance have that base load capacity, India will be slow to phase out coal um, and yeah slower than expected. Can a US-India trade deal perhaps act as a catalyst to achieve uh, India's renewable objective or does it stand to complicate uh, scaling renewable energy in India given how solar power uh, has become such a hot potato in the trade arena? Yeah, exactly. That's a very great and very on-point question, um, very relevant. So the recent U.S. solar tariffs um, imposed on four ASEAN countries, which have accounted for over 80% of U.S. solar imports, and these are Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, as well as Thailand. Um, you know, we think that supply chains might shift to India as a result of these tariffs, making those imports from those countries very uncompetitive. Um, India is also having a lot of domestic manufacturing policies to really boost uh, its um, local domestic manufacturing capability. So India does have a huge US um, market to export to and definitely an area of opportunity for growth. We've talked about how coal inevitably still needs to be part of uh, the transition uh, story. Is there... Is there room or is there a narrative and how convinced are you that clean coal technologies, carbon capture, sequestration can help sort of mitigate those, those concerns, very real legitimate concerns from uh, environmentalists that, look, uh, nothing has really changed here and this is self-defeating if we got coal being part of the solution? Yeah, plus, um, BMI thinks that, you know, we agree with that and if you look at the companies really pushing for carbon capture and storage, mm. um, it is really the oil and gas companies mm. um, to upstream and not renewables per se. And if you look at the um, economics of it, it just hasn't financially taken off to a point where it's viable. So if you look at levelized costs, if you include the cost of coal with carbon capture, it's actually a lot more expensive than solar, especially with the cost of batteries coming down year on year. Um, so it is not economically viable, and you know we, we do not think that it will go onto a path of widespread commercialization, CCUS. We were talking about... Uh, the AI revolution and India is no exception and uh, the, it's in the nascent stage but there is a data center build out underway in, in India and you and I know Linda that this is extremely energy intensive. How does that change uh, the narrative in terms of the transition that India is undergoing and again uh, controversial but should nuclear be part of the story as well? That's a great question, Sri. Um, the short answer is yes, mm. and the India government is, sees this as well, very aware of it. And it's in its recent India budget, 2025-2026, released in February, it has set very lofty goals for nuclear um, 
by, by the next decade. So with the rise of new novel technologies as well, such as small modular reactors, um, India is you know, at the forefront of nuclear development and, and clean round the clock base load is, is becoming increasingly important for data centers to run. Yeah. What is the workaround then uh, as you see it? And let's start with uh, the grid capacity constraints. What can policymakers and the public and the private sector do in collaboration to uh, overcome these challenges on the grid side? Great question, Sri. For the grid side, um, it is really the public sector that's pushing grid expansion, mm. grid upgrades, connectivity, building new transmission, distribution lines. Because of um, the nature of where distribution companies, which are sort of in charge of grid build-out, are owned by the public, DISCOMs, um, and they're not privatised. Despite there having been talks you know, over the years of privatisation, we just haven't seen it yet. Um, uh, except in a few uh, states such as Delhi. So um, there is a limited amount that the uh, private sector can do in terms of grid, but there are other new technologies such as battery storage that can, uh, that can you know, sort of address these intermittency issues that comes along with renewables. What does it mean for, for, the, for domestic pricing uh, as, as, this, as this transition gets underway with the, with the challenges and the opportunities and the workarounds that are uh, necessary. Does it mean that businesses and consumers will have to pay more, perhaps, for their power? So there are a few elements to this and you know there might be opposing forces, let mm. me go into it. So India is predominantly reliant on coal and mm. BMI's oil and gas team forecasts coal prices to actually come down, um, see a downwards pressure in the next two years. So that's on the bright side. However, on the um, less, less bright side, you know, solar and you know, renewables is becoming increasingly important. And with India, um, one of the contexts is India is relying a lot on building its domestic manufacturing for solar panels. And that is a lot more expensive than what they are used to, which is importing cheap Chinese solar panels. So that will definitely um, add, to, add to increasing cost pressures, um, as well as a small um, increase in reliance on gas, which is set to increase um, over the near term. So overall, we believe that prices will see a slight increase over the next two years, um, but that's also limited because of how prices are set by the state regulators. And are you seeing anything uh, transformative in terms of storage solutions? Because when it comes to renewable, the, the common perception or perhaps misperception is that it cannot meet uh, baseload demand. You need LNG, you need uh, coal. How far are storage solutions within the Indian context enabling storage of renewable power to meet that base load? So at the moment, storage is still lacking, massively mm. lacking to meet the, the demand required for renewables. Um, however, we do see trends in, for example, auctions and tenders by the government where storage projects and you know, hybrid projects, for example, solar and wind hybrid, um, that can better serve round-the-clock power, uh, coming more and more under the spotlight. So actually a vast majority of projects fall under this um, hybrid and storage category. There is um, increasing you know, uh, attention on this, but it will take a number of years for it to develop to the scale that it really needs to meet that of renewables rollout. And we often hear about LNG being the transition fuel. Does that does that hold true for India? I mean, it is still a fossil fuel, but it's a less polluting yeah. fossil uh, fuel. And uh, the oil and gas industry do like to, for want of a better expression, put it on the pedestal. It is invariably going to be part of a US-India trade deal as well, yes. I, I would imagine. How would you characterise the role that LNG plays in supporting the transition? So currently... Um LNG, the share of LNG in India's um, electricity generation mix is maybe 1 to 2 percent, so a tiny fraction. Mm -hmm. We do not believe that this will increase significantly even over the long term, just simply because the prices of LNG are really high compared to coal and even that of solar. 
And um, as a matter of fact, a lot of the LNG power plants in India, they have very, very low um, utilization factors. So about 20% when, you know, usually these plants can run up to 60%. So even though they have the capacity, they are simply not using it for generation due to the high cost.